Hi everybody, welcome to my solar kiln build. All the uh, solar kilns that I see online are either really tiny or most of them are actually really big. And I don't have a need for a huge solar kiln. However, I do have some beautiful black locust wood that, and uh, white oak that I want to dry and make into some furniture. So I'm going to build a slightly smaller solar kiln and I'll try to keep you updated during the process. So the first thing I did is I drew a straight line and I uh, dug some holes here and put in some stone dust and leveled three blocks across and I'm in the process of putting the back three blocks in and um, I have to dig down because I think I had stored some loam here at one point. I want some good solid footing with some stone dust and then I'm using some uh, granite pieces to raise the cinder block. That is the black locust wood that I have that I cut with my Alaskan chainsaw mill. Beautiful stuff. And that is my white oak back there. Anyway, I'm going to complete the leveling of the blocks and then I'm going to start putting the frame together. All right, I forgot to video the next step, which was cutting the stock to length and uh, this is 12 feet long and it's going to be about five feet three inches wide and I'm using two by eights um, they're 16 inches on center using my trusty nail gun and I'm just about done I only have two more left to put in my blocks are all nice and level I got two by fours under there under on top of the blocks just temporarily so I can uh, just set the, the floor joists right on top of those. So, All right, until next shot. All right, it's starting to get dark. There goes my lovely compressor. And let's take a look at this. All right, I got the last two in. The next step is cutting the insulation to, to put in under the flooring. Well, actually, I gotta take the two by fours out. Alright, so the next step is to install the insulation and what I've done is I'm using one inch rigid insulation. I cut them to size 14 and a half inches and I made a little jig so I can mark the, uh, the two, by, 2 by 8 and I just drag that along. It makes a line and then To make sure that the uh, insulation stays in place, I put these little spaces in here. And I'm going to put a couple more on the sides, but just so you kind of see the process. But this one's nice and snug, so maybe I don't need it on the side. And done. All right, so I finished the base. I had some extra pressure treated plywood that I used. Unfortunately, it's a slightly different thickness, but I'm not building the Taj Mahal. So I uh, have the insulation under the plywood. I use some construction adhesive to uh, make sure that the insulation stays attached to the plywood and I nailed it in. Ready for the next stage. I'm building the side walls inside my workshop, which is a little warmer than outside, which is in the mid 30s. And putting it all together right here, I'm going to carry it out to the deck and install it soon. So, until next time. Finished the sides in my shop, brought them out, then I installed the front wall, making sure everything was plumb. Looking good so far. Hopefully I can do a lot more tomorrow during the daylight.
All right, today is December 4th, and today I added a few extra screws in between, and I don't know if you can see, but I put air conditioning um, foam in there to block any heat from escaping over there. And one of the pitfalls of making this exactly 12 feet wide is I ran out of roofing about a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch short. So I had to put this piece of flashing in all the way up. And uh, I actually curved that up a little bit, tucked it under, and then screwed in some extra screws. And uh, seems hopefully it's going to work well. And we're getting, we're getting close. I have to install the fans put the baffle up, paint it all black on the inside, and then we are gonna be ready to put some of this black locust wood in there to dry and some white oak. December 4th, 2020. All right, it's December 9th, and yesterday I insulated everything. And for these areas, I put a vapor barrier up and put some OSB board, had some extra plywood there, and insulated everything. The doors and the top, I have to cut out the vents still, as you can see. And put vapor barrier on the doors along with some plywood that I have. And once I do that, it'll be time to paint. And then we can uh, install the fans, cut the vents out, and get some wood in here to dry. Alrighty, until next time, adios amigos. All right, I put the quarter inch Luan plywood on the doors. And here's the other one. This one, for whatever reason, when I, I used my nail gun, when I nailed it on, I must have been pushing back a little bit because I went to try to close the door and it was staying out like that. Like that right there. Maybe not that much, something like that, half an inch. So what I did is I had to pop all the nails and then I used this guy and drilled that in to, to suck the door in flush. Uh, then I popped all the nails and you can see all the beauty marks now. And then I re-nailed it, putting it a little bit under stress uh, so that it would stay flat. And now it seems to close fine. So we are good. Next step is to put a coat of paint on it and then hang the fans before I keep smashing my head. Later. All right, it's December 13th. Got a lot done yesterday. I cut out back vents. Had to cover them up because it rained last night. And I marked out the inside vents. And I put the support across or the fans, the baffle, I guess you'd call it. Got some wood in there. And the next step is to cut the inside of the vents and install the covers that I have in my shop. Until next time. Alrighty, December 22nd. I'm probably like 
98% done with this. I need to actually put a thermometer in there that I can read. But the, uh, the two fans are set to go on when it's 74 degrees in there, and it was just a little while ago, and they were running. But in case you don't know how it works, it heats up in there through the solar power, and the baffle in there, which is actually a black vinyl sheet, uh, is sort of something that, it, that holds the heat. That's draped over the pile of, of lumber, and the lumber is piled with sticks between each one, each board. And so when that with fans are on, all the only way the air can go is down the front, through the pile, and then to the back. And then in the back, we have these baffles. And when it's warmer out, I would open these a little bit. And there are some at the top that I haven't finished yet. That's the only thing left to do. The top would draw in fresh, dry air. The bottom would expel uh, warm, moist air, I guess. And then the, the whole thing goes back through the pile. So it's very efficient, but you need sunlight. And it is winter in Massachusetts, but all is looking good. With my solar kiln. Talk to you later. All right, December 26th, 2020. This baby is performing as designed. You can see the fans are on, so it's at least 74 degrees in there. I have the uh, black vinyl collector, I guess you'd call it, in there. And then I have some pieces of granite that I painted black on top of the pile so that the sun is not directly on the pile. And let's see if we can see the temperature in there. We cannot see the thermometer. Okay. I checked it out and it's 78 degrees in there and 34 degrees outside. I hope you enjoyed my solar kiln build. Hopefully I'll have some furniture to show you in a couple of months.